and welcome to this video uh, in today's video we're going to be looking at the model of Bowen's reaction series which is your ESSRT page number 13 the upper part now this table is trying to explain to us how different minerals are produced in an ignos rock as we know, ignos rock are produced from the cooling and solidification of magma or lava. So what this table is trying to um, explain to us is how different minerals are crystallized from magma as the magma cools down at different temperatures. So Mr. Boy, the scientist that developed this series, what he did was to take uh, granite or take ignos rock and superheat them and convert those rock back to lava or back to magma and then at different temperatures he would take samples out and cool them down to see what minerals were created at those temperatures so on the left side of the diagram we have temperature and then we have the highest temperature at 1400 degrees celsius and the lava begins to cool down uh, to the lowest temperature, which is 650 degrees uh, Celsius. So at different temperatures, as the temperature begins to drop for the magma or lava, as the case may be, different minerals were crystallized or created. So at the highest of temperature, only the mineral olivine is created. Then um, as the temperature drops further, parts of that olivine would react with the magma that is still hot that is still flowing and would create a different kind of mineral pyrosine and then part of pyrosine would react with the lava or the magma to create the next set of mineral which is be amphibore and then on to biotite mica and ultimately to potassium uh vesper right here so for that reason this arm of the reaction series is called discontinuous series because different minerals entirely different mineral is created at different temperatures by the old mineral reacting with the hot magma or lava and creating a new set of mineral so that is the continuous arm of the series on the other hand, we have the continuous series, as it implies. This is the same mineral. In this case, we are looking at Vesper or Pagoclase Vesper. Pagoclase Vesper uh, cools down and begins to create or begins to be richer in sodium, which means at higher temperature, uh, the Vesper is richer in calcium. As the temperature begins to drop downward, it becomes richer and richer in sodium. So in between would be a 50-50 situation between calcium and sodium. But at high temperature, 1,400 degrees Celsius is only rich in calcium. Then at lower temperature, is richer in sodium. So take note of that on the continuous series. And of course, the continuous series ultimately would lead to potassium vesper. And then potassium vesper at lower temperature would create muscovite mica, and the muscovite mica would lead to the last mineral in the reaction series, which is quartz. Quartz would be the lowest temperature at 650 degrees Celsius. So take note that at these different temperatures, different ignos rocks are being created. For example, if all the mineral in the rock at that high temperature is olivine then it will create ultra mafic rock which are darker and denser as we discussed um in our previous lessons now if it's a combination of uh olivine and pyrazine then we'll have mafic if it's more pyrazine then we have mafic such rocks such as basalt and gabbro and uh, we have the rocks that are intermediate in between they are not mafic they are not felsic but they are rather in between which would be andesite and diorite now this rock will be way much richer in uh pyroclase vesper that has a lot of sodium in it and then a mixture of amphibore aka humbled and muscovite mica 
and then uh, ultimately we go further to Muscovite mica and quartz, and those would be the felsic igneous rock, which would be rhyolite and granite. Now, um, the last column, which is the visualization of the magma, uh, or magma crystals. Uh, observe that olivine is more like a square right there. Pyrozine is more like a rectangle in there. Uh, Muscovite mica is like a pentag uh, pentagon uh, having five sides. Um, then quartz is a hexagon having six sides. Uh, Muscovite mica is very similar to Beltat mica. These are the mica family. The only difference here is that one of them is darker than the other. Muscovite is way lighter because it's more felsic. It, it was produced at a lower temperature uh, compared to Beltat mica. Um, on the Vesper side, taking the difference between the calcium Vesper compared to the potassium uh, Vesper, again, it is the shade of the color that is very important, and then all the way to the K Vesper with elongated uh, rhombus shape, um, if you will. So, pretty much, this is the summary of what this table is trying to um, show to us. <clears throat> Nice summary, we have um, the discontinuous side and then we have the continuous series um, side and ultimately meeting in the felsic region and then creating a uh, potassium vesper, um, muscovite, mica and quartz. Now we can use this diagram in conjunction with the one uh, below it. For example, <clears throat> we know that um, the continuous side produces more sodium rich content as we move towards the felsic side. So we can see that here that potassium vesper and sodium vesper is increasing as we head towards the felsic side of this table. Conversely, um, calcium is increasing as we go towards olivine, as we go towards um, the higher temperature. So as temperature begins to increase in this direction to the right, we we'll see that the amounts of um, the amounts of iron and magnesium and calcium is increasing in that direction um, as well. Also take note of the composition, uh, how much mineral is in each of these rock. We see that ultra mythic rock here is more made up of olivine. So we can see that ultra mythic rock here has more olivine uh, in them. All right, then a little bit of pyrazine, which means the continuous, uh, the, the continuous series there where more olivine reacts with the magma to create the next set of uh, mineral, which is pyrazine. And then we have that in there. Then also notice within the Pagoclase Vesper, we have calcium rich on the mythic side, and then we have sodium rich towards the felsic side. Again, that is crystal clear here. Sodium rich towards the felsic side and calcium rich towards the mythic side as well. So these two tables can go hand in hand in enabling you to answer certain questions. So ultimately, we would have that uh, silica is increasing as we go towards the felsic side, which means minerals like quartz and muscovite mica and potassium vesper would have more silicates in them. We have more silica in them uh, compared to uh, the mafic or ultra mafic uh, igneous rock. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's take a look at two examples here and then we would uh, wrap it up nicely. This question says, according to the Bowers reaction series, the minerals in the discontinuous series react with magma to become a different mineral as the magma cools. Although this was demonstrated experimentally in the laboratory, some of the minerals that formed at high temperatures have been shown to survive as the magma cools. Which of the following describes a mechanism that shows some of these minerals to be preserved as the magma continues to cool down? So he's talking about the question is talking about the discontinuous side and how each of the minerals would react with magma to produce the next mineral and then the next mineral 
on the discontinuous side. So it's asking for a possible reason why some minerals that are found at high temperatures could be preserved or could be seen where the magma finally cools to a lower temperature. So option A, the magma becomes extremely vis viscous, uh, preventing chemical alteration of existing minerals. No, the discontinuous series happens such that the previous mineral continues to react with the magma to produce the next mineral. So A couldn't be true. B, magma becomes so depleted of mineral forming element that no new minerals can form. No, that's the whole idea behind the discontinuous series is that a new mineral can be formed as the magma reacts with minerals that have already crystallized previously at higher temperatures. So B couldn't be it. C, the crystals that form first settle out of the magma, becoming physically separate, separated from the magma. Mm. Smells like the answer. Let's hold on to that. Let's look at D. The crystal forms in layers, allowing their interiors to remain chemically isolated from the magma. No, crystals do not form in layers. Um, and they do react chemically with the magma to create the next mineral. Um, they don't like, they're not completely isolated or uh, anything in uh, stopping them from reacting with the magma. So D couldn't be E either. I will stick with C in this situation. Apologies for my voice. Um, next question. Based on, based on the information provided in the Bowen's reaction series, a magma with which of the following composition would have the highest silica content? Hmm. So we are looking at silica content. Which mineral or which magma would have the highest silica content? We did discuss this here at the bottom, uh, the table below. We said that the amount of silica is increasing towards the left side, which means it's more on the felsic side. So let's see. Option A, granitic. Yeah, granitic is another fancy way of saying felsic because Felsic rock are granite. So when you say something is granitic, it's another way of saying it's felsic. So option A could be our best answer here. And the Cephic, which means from the underside, from the intermediate, intermediate rocks or magma would definitely have some silicate, but the felsic one will have higher silicate because silicate content or silica content is increasing towards the left. So yeah, my answer still remains granitic. Basothic, which is again another way of saying mephic from the word basalt, we have basothic. So basothic will have a lower content of silica. So B, C is out. Ultra mephic, which is the peridotite group. Uh, no, that will have the lowest. This will have actually have the lowest. This will have the lowest um, silica. So yeah, my answer remains A in this situation. So this is how we're going to be using this um, reference table page. Uh, we can easily combine it with the one at the bottom, which is the mineral composition of Ignos rock. And we can also even combine it with page number 14, where we have the rock circle uh, flow chart of the different rocks. And we can even combine it with the mineral uh, table, which is page number 16 and 17. So you can transfer information in between each of these pages to get to your answer as you walk your way through different problems. With practice, you get a hand on it. All right.